Welcome to Monet Cafe. I'm artist Susan Jenkins and this tutorial is going to be so sweet. I will be painting Lily of the Valley flowers in soft pastel on unsanded paper. Oh, and if you would take a moment, please like this video. Go ahead and do it right now. Subscribe to this channel and hit that bell icon so you don't miss anything. You'll get notified of future videos. Also, this video and many of my videos is only brought to you because of the faithful support of my patrons on my Patreon channel. It's $5 a month to support this channel. It's really what keeps me able to do what I'm doing here. So I appreciate it and you get extra content if you become a patron. Now let me give you a backstory as to how this painting came to be. Back in 2014, I think, 2015, the local news commentator, Angeli Davis, isn't she beautiful? It was a local Fox News station that did a story on me that they called Illustrating Faith. I had been through a battle with cancer and I had started a project where I was donating some free artwork to a local orphanage. And it was these large paintings I did in acrylic with hidden images. It's called Finding Jesus. They all had these hidden images. And I couldn't finish them because I got cancer. I started one painting and um, I went through this battle with cancer, with chemo and radiation. And praise the Lord, he obviously wasn't done with me yet. I was able to finish the paintings and even finish a children's book that I illustrated. Some of you may not know. I have this book, The Mountain Queen, that I wrote and illustrated. It is on Amazon. So what does all of that have to do with these paintings? Well, Anjali and I, we just hit it off. You know, you just connect with somebody. She's precious. I've stayed in touch with her on social media. And she commissioned me to do these Lily of the Valley paintings because she's pregnant with her third child. Oh my goodness, her children are beautiful. So she wanted it to be very earthy and really neutral colors. And she wanted three paintings, of course, because this is her third child. And I love this unison 120 half stick set because it's arranged so beautifully by color and value. I knew I could easily grab neutral colors. And I actually decided to use an unsanded pastel paper. This is Canson Mitant's pastel paper, the gray tones pad. And I know I use sanded surfaces all the time and many artists brag on sanded surfaces, but unsanded surfaces really can produce some really nice work as well. And they don't get quite as much layering, but because she wanted this earthy and simple, I just felt like this color background and the unsanded surface would work very nicely. So I began sketching. Now, I apologize, I don't have any reference images. What I did is I just got online and started looking at lots of Lily of the Valley flowers and kind of came up with my own uh, interpretation, composition. The little one that you see to the upper right, and I am speeding up the uh, sketching part here, is uh, just kind of a, a small concept sketch or painting. And I like to do these if I'm doing a commission project, just to make sure we're on the same sheet of music. And um, she she loved the composition, but she wanted the colors even more neutral. And even though the ladybug was kind of cute for a child or a children's room, um, she just really wanted to focus on these lily of the valley flowers. So if you ever do a commission work, you know, it's a good idea to kind of give your client uh, an idea of what's in your mind so they can share and you don't waste your time on a painting that may not be what they have in mind. So I'm just using a white charcoal pencil and I'm just sketching in on this Canson paper. You can see I have it marked off. She wanted them to be eight and a half, not eight and a half, eight by 11 and vertical, all three of them. That's another thing you want to uh, finalize before you get started. Little things like that, it's crazy. Um, I knew an artist who had done a big commission piece and she completed it and it, it was one or the other, horizontal or, vert horizontal or vertical, and the client wanted it the other way. <laughs> so these are just little things you wanna put on your checklist if you ever do commission artwork. Um, so you can see, I'm just wanting this to be a pleasing composition, but I know I've been talking a lot about this in my latest tutorials. I know that something in this is going to be the focal point. Now, because I've already done the little one, that's another reason for doing a concept sketch, is that if you're pretty close uh, to what your client wants, you've already done it once. You kind of have an idea of what your strategy is. And my strategy was to make some of those flowers more dynamic, more the focal point than others. And it's going to be the ones that are larger. They're a little more in the foreground. And as I paint, I'm going to talk about some of the strategies I use to make that happen. 
and I am using the smooth side of the Canson paper. And now it's called pastel paper, but it is not sanded. It is just paper. It has some texture to it. And when you open the pad, the the page that's facing you is going to be the one that has a little bit more of that texture. The paper has um, little bumps in it. Some people do not like that side at all. I actually work on both sides, but I thought I wanted this to be soft, so I decided to flip it over and use the side that's a little more smooth without all that texture. And I know I'm not going to be able to get a lot of layers, and if you're new to pastel painting, that is really one of the advantages of using the sanded surfaces and I'm talking yeah like hardware store sandpaper it's but it's very um, fine you can get it in different grits you can get coarse or fine and of course it's artist grade it's archival so you know don't go to your local hardware store um, to paint on sanded surfaces I mean you can but it won't guarantee the longevity of your painting and when you paint on an unsanded surface I've found that my success on unsanded surfaces has gotten better as my skills have gotten better over the years. I got very frustrated with it to begin with. I saw all these works by other pastel artists that were just so great and had such vibrant color and my painting paintings were turning to mud. Well, one of the reasons is because I was overworking them and I was having too much pressure. You want to keep a light touch, whether you're working on unsanded or sanded surfaces, but most certainly on unsanded surfaces. So because I kind of have a roadmap, I know what I'm doing here. I'm doing what's called blocking in. I know that I want to have a background that's a little bit darker and especially with respect to focal point, like I was talking about before, one focal point strategy is contrast. And now I know I've got really light flowers and the light flowers that I want to be my focal point are going to show up even more as focal point areas if I have them surrounded by dark, you know, a dark background with a light flower. And, and it's not really dark, but um, darker. So that's why I want to get in a little bit of dark and I know I can layer a little bit. So there's some areas that I will be lightening up. And um, on this one too, I added some uh, leaves. You can see, I just, you know, I was just looking at it and I thought, I want this to flow and feel very fluid uh, and have the eye move around. So I kind of blocked in some large, um, I don't know, kind of artistic looking leaves to enhance the composition. Now you'll see here this, what I'm putting down, this darker blue, I'm keeping a super light touch and the painting or the paper still looks very textural. So I have a little trick that I do. This works great on unsanded paper and even on some sanded surfaces. I use a chamois cloth. Um, it's spelled either chamois, C-H-A-M-O-I-S, or it's become known as chamois, S-H-A-M-M-Y. You can get it. I got mine at the dollar store, a big old thing of it for a dollar. Now you see how this just blends so nicely? So I'm just kind of blending in and around and it's taking away all of those little, um, I don't know, textural areas of the paper and making more of a smooth background. I'm speeding up this blending part quite a bit because you get the idea. So get that layer blended in. And now I did find this really neat green that was in a Diane Townsend set. It was had a little bit more of a foresty green. It was a little warmer, not a lot warmer, just a tad warmer. And what I'm going to use that for is getting some of the darker areas in the leaves, those uh, kind of artistic leaves that I did. And now I've got a um, a pastel that has a little bit more green to it. It's a little warmer still. And notice that I'm, or you will notice, I'll even grab something lighter uh, for the final layer of these leaves. And that is my typical method and a lot of artists for pastels is to work dark to light. And even though I'm working on an unsanded paper, I do have the ability to get I don't know, four to six layers down. But again, back to my point about you'll find probably you get better on unsanded papers as your skills get better. That's because you don't have to overcorrect. You get better at, and because I've done this painting before too, you get better at um, what I call, I've never heard anybody else say this, so maybe it's my own thing. I finally have something that's mine, <laughs> is uh, efficiency of stroke. And what that means is 
your strokes aren't wasted. Um, they're pretty purposeful and right when you get them down. Now, I'm not saying I'm great at that, but um, you are able to work better on unsanded surfaces when you don't have to keep going back over and over again to change something, to correct it, and you will definitely lose the vibrancy of the color, and it will turn muddy and flat. So those things get better as the more that you paint and the more experience that you get. So I'm doing the same thing with these other leaves. And I've only sped this section up, uh, or the, the rest of this painting is only sped up slightly so that um, I can kind of talk you through it. it. Trust me, it would probably get pretty boring if I had it totally real time the whole time. <laughs> and um, you might get bored and just stop watching. So, <laughs> but the other two paintings, I am going to just briefly show you at the end. I'm going to speed those up, but you'll see a little bit of my painting process. Um, three videos in one would be a lot. So now I'm using my chamois cloth again, and I used kind of the corner. I cut little squares and I turn the corners. I turn them when I need to use uh, or blend a new color, and I don't want to contaminate the previous color. And by the way, you can wash these. I got a little, uh, like a little lingerie or delicate laundry bag that has a zipper that you can put these in and wash them in your washer. So you can repurpose and reuse these. And now you can see I'm still in the blocking in stage. I haven't gotten to the flowers yet, but I really did like this uh, kind of a teal color. Now I knew she didn't want it as bright. And if you've been on my channel much, you know I love color, have a tendency to over exaggerate color, maybe too much. But because the client wanted it neutral, and I'm happy, I happen to be loving more of a neutral palette. Now there were my color notes I plopped up there real quickly. I have got to find those. Now, I always tell my patrons or on my videos, if you're a patron of mine, you get extra goodies. Uh, almost always you get my color notes. I try to make little notes and I take a photo of it and I share it in the Patreon post of this same video. Uh, sometimes my patrons get uh, extra content, but I I'm not sure if I can find those color notes. <laughs> I've got to find those. I forgot that I even did them until I just rewatched this video. So patrons, I hope I can find those color notes. But you guys are always so great. Even you know, you're very forgiving and kind. Thank you so much, patrons. And now I'm just going in and giving a little bit more uh, color, a little more vibrancy. Now that's another focal point strategy too. Uh, neutral colors get more pushed back. Vibrant colors are more focal interest. They, your eyes notice them more. So I'm making my greens a little bit more vibrant for some areas of the stem. Um, and uh, now that's why I went a little darker with this one. I didn't want these other ones. The lilies that are on, lily of the valley flowers on the left and on the right, especially that one. That one's pushed back the furthest. It's the furthest away. And now I'm adding a little of that same color. Um, consider your light source. I know the light is hitting kind of from the upper right. So I know I'm going to get some little shadows underneath the stems. Um, so I'm using that dark to kind of give that idea. And then I later even add an even lighter light on one on the right side of the stem. And I keep that light um, concept of where the light's coming from in mind the whole time while I'm painting. And you're going to see me when I do the flowers really talk more about that as well. So you can see I've gotten kind of a long way with this blocking in stage. Uh, this painting, I don't know, maybe the, maybe it took a little more than an hour. Um, but again, it would have probably taken longer if I hadn't already done the concept sketch. It definitely would have taken longer. So I'm, I'm refining and, and uh, defining areas here. And you can see now how the focal point is starting to come out based on some of my stroke work. Uh, with my strategy of that middle vine is going to be definitely more of the interest, the center of interest. And you want to also to make sure you don't have too much uh, focal point right along the, the edges of your painting. You don't want to pull somebody's eye right out of your painting. That's another Diane Townsend. You see it's lighter. Remember I mentioned I would lighten up, highlight where that sunlight is hitting on some of those um, little kind of viney things. And by the way, I thought it was perfect that Anjali chose Lily of the Valley flowers um, to represent her three children um, and hang in the, in the children's room. And I thought so because they're so delicate. They're just so gentle and feel innocent. I just love that. And the theme this month 
even though I didn't paint this this month, I painted it like um, in March, maybe. So, but the theme this month in Monet Cafe is new life. Well, how perfect to share this video this month, because the most precious new life is that of a child, or possibly um, definitely being born again, not just being born, but you know what I mean. If you're a believer in Christ, being born again is the most amazing new life. So I just thought these little flowers were just so precious for this month's theme and the beautiful blessing of a new baby. Oh my goodness. And notice how I have resisted the urge to get too detailed anywhere. I find that when I work the whole work overall, getting blocking in first, then gradually refining and working all of the areas almost simultaneously when it comes to uh, gradually getting to that final crescendo of fine tuning at the end and putting in your, your final um, marks like icing on a cake or, or sprinkles on a cake would like be the final. I find that your paintings will end up being more impressionistic, more um, overall have a, a connectivity to it, and it will just feel painterly and harmonious. I'm always comparing music and art. I think there are so many similarities. Now I'm using some of the Diane Townsends again, and just kind of working the whole, like I said, and looking for areas where I can add a little contrast. That dark um, in that center portion of the leaf is uh, going to create some contrast with that one uh, lily of the valley flower that's kind of at the top. It stands out more. The white flower or the neutral colored flower that I have will show out more with a little bit of dark around it. So, so those are just little things to keep in mind. And it seems a bit overwhelming. I remember I was totally overwhelmed. I'm like, how can I remember all these things while I'm painting? But you just take it one step at a time. Every painting is a success. And it's because you learned something. Even if that painting is one that you want to throw in file 13, that's something I learned a long time ago. It's the garbage can. I don't know why they call it file, th file 13. <laughs> but even if you toss it, and trust me, I have tossed, oh my gosh, probably hundreds of paintings and studies. But you learned something. You learned what not to do, or you learned what you liked about it. You might have learned how you overworked it, but it's a success. And I, part of Monet Cafe and my philosophy of painting, I don't paint for the, um, the praises or, or for contests or um, anything other than I love to share. I love to teach. I love to get better. Don't get me wrong. I want to get better. I love seeing my work and feeling pleased with it. But I like to stress that there is joy in the experience of painting. Don't forget that. And even if it's a failed painting, I've had times where I had the most joyous painting experience and I wasn't happy with the final but I don't forget the fact that that was a moment that I had that was beautiful so I hope you guys can learn to embrace that trust me it's hard to do it first we're all kind of uh overly picky with ourselves uh, but you get better at it all right so you can see I'm still kind of developing using my little chamois cloth technique now notice too I have not done anything to these Lily of the Valley flowers, and they're already starting to stand out because of, like I said, the contrast. Now we can see them. Now I wanted to make sure, this is another thing too, that I wasn't um, getting outside. If she's going to make this an 8 by 10 I had to make sure my composition, I wasn't, you know, veering too far out of my parameters that I had there. Now I got a, a, a nice dark. This was also one in the unison. I believe this is in the unison set still. Um, and this is also, once again, creating that contrast. Do you see how it automatically gave the feeling of depth and a three-dimensional feel? And I'm lightly adding it to some other areas, not everywhere. Um, and I like to share in a lot of my videos, I have efficiency of stroke in another way too. I try to efficiency of the pastel I'm holding, meaning that if I've got it in my hand and I see where else I can use it, I go ahead and add it there. And it creates, again, that cohesiveness. And and you can paint faster when you're not going, you know, let me use this dark. Now let me lay it down. Let me pick up another color. So you paint a little bit faster that way. Now here are some of the colors that I'm going to use for the Lily of the Valley flowers. They're all very neutral blues. That's going to be probably that one is going to be my lightest highlight. But why am I starting out with blue? Aren't these flowers white? Well, 
I know that there is a coolness in the shadows. And when you think of cool colors, um, just think of how you cool off in the shade and colors cool off in the shade as well. And cool colors are more at the cool side of the color wheel, which is blues, lavenders, purples. And so this nice kind of a neutral blue, it's kind of a teal blue, got a little hint of teal in it. And I'm using this color kind of as a base, especially for the flowers that aren't my main focal point. And I'm having a real light touch with that. Notice I'm not pressing real hard and getting a lot of that color down. These guys are not the central focus. Now I've got a lavender. It's a, it's a really neutral. It looks a little dark in my hand, but it, it doesn't apply quite as dark. And I'm getting that shadowy side. They, they do have a shadow side. Um, not the upper right, like I said, is kind of where the light is coming from. So the lower left is going to be more of the shadow. Not that they're going to stay this dark, but again, working dark to light. Now on these flowers, I got plenty of layering, even on the sun sanded paper, because I haven't applied any pastel to the flowers yet. Now I wanted to get a little bit of a warmer lavender, maybe a little bit more of a a magenta neutral color. And why would I do that? Now I'm not doing this on the underside of the flower. I'm kind of doing it a little bit on the top. Well, this color is a little warmer. On the color wheel, it's going more towards the warm side, reds, yellows, oranges. And um, so I'm adding a little bit more of that warmth. Now I did add a little bit of that to the lower side of some of those. Oh, it's the little, they have like little tails, the little lily of the valley flowers that kind of stick out. And some of those were catching a little bit of the light that was kind of filtering around. Um, so I continue to just uh, develop these. And again, I haven't put down any of the lighter colors. Now, how many of you, if you were beginner artist, would have immediately tried to grab a white or a pretty light color if you started painting Lily of the Valleys? And what that does is it doesn't really give you any depth. You have no contrast. Your flowers are going to feel very flat if you just paint them white. Um or light colors. So by layering the colors dark to light, considering the light source, considering the color temperature, you're going to create things that are more three-dimensional. Now I'm going to show you some of the colors for my final colors. Now notice this also isn't white. Do you see how it's kind of a, a neutral beige? And I wanted these to be, again, earthy, like Angelie wanted. And I didn't want some of them to just stand out so bright, like totally white. And so I thought it gave a little bit of warmth. And notice I am strategically choosing some, not all of them. And my touch is getting lighter as my focal point is getting more diminished. When I add it to an area that's not the focal point, I keep a super light touch. Now this one's a little bit darker. It is even more a little bit, I guess you'd call it more of a goldy yellow, but still very neutral, very light. And uh, just hinting at it in some other areas. But I haven't, notice I haven't gone to some of those other Lily of the Valley flowers. They're not the focal point. And they're not getting quite as much of the sunlight. Oh, I guess my hair gets everywhere. Sometimes I have to pull it off of my my pastels. That's crazy. Um, so now I believe I'm getting a little lighter. And some of those flowers, you could, they didn't just come right out of the stem. Some of them, you could kind of see the flower going behind the stem. So there's a few of them that I, you know, kind of develop that a little bit. And um, I also eventually add uh, some of those little, those little tails, they have like um, three or four little, um, like a bell shape. And that that's really kind of how these were shaped. I had never painted Lily of the Valley flowers before. So that's the beautiful thing about being an artist. We are constantly being called to observe nature and learn things we never learned before or look at things in a new way. I'll never look at Lily of the Valley flowers the same way because now I've painted them. Now this is a Prismacolor new pastel. It's a harder pastel. It's kind of a nice pastel for a little bit of a finer line, some final marks if you want some um, gestural marks. So what I do is it's a little bit lighter than the other colors I used. So this is going to create that final focal point. Some of the final, like I said, sprinkles on the cake. Um, and now I'm using it to create just some of those fun little um, tails on the little bell shape um, 
uh, shape of the Lily of the Valley flowers and to just kind of have a little bit of gesture to them, a little bit of liveliness to them. And uh, I think this is fun. I do this often when I'm finished with a flower painting. I, I kind of go over them with almost like little illustrative or fun marks. And uh, I thought that made these uh, almost feel like they were blowing in the wind. They weren't quite as stiff when I added these marks. And it's really pretty close to being done at this point. I do add some contrast and some darker values in some of the areas on the stem. And I'm going to go ahead and speed up this end part here so I can be sure to share a little bit of the footage from the next two paintings. But I wanted to purposely make sure I didn't overwork this. I knew that Anjali wanted this to be very organic and she really liked the idea of like a brown paper. So if I overwork this too much, you wouldn't get that influence of the paper uh, kind of peeking through. So, and she did already frame all of these and sent me a picture. She framed them so nicely. Um, so here you go. You can see I'm speeding this up now. And also at this point, I think you can probably very subtly observe the focal point strategy. Do you notice that there is a little cascading part of some of those flowers coming from the middle um, kind of bottom to the top where they have more, they're lighter and they have a bit more detail than some of the other ones and that helps to keep things uh, uh, or to define your focal point. I did go back and add a little bit of that prettier lighter blue I just, I thought there was um, a, a little bit more color, but once again, she wanted this very neutral, so I had to resist the urge to grab some bright and bold colors. And I wanted to just confirm again and check again that my um, cropping will work okay for framing an eight by 10. Uh, this is just a mat that I've cut so that I can adjust it pretty much however I need to. Um, it almost wasn't big enough, but you know what I'm saying. You could move it in or out to make a five by seven, a six by eight, a four by five, whatever, by simply adjusting the two cut sections of the mat. So I was happy with this one. And here's the final. And even though I think the video would have been too long if I included all three of these in um, real time or slightly sped up, the last two, I'm going to speed it up a bit, but it's the same concept. Getting in my darks, of course I got in my little sketch with my white charcoal pencil. This one I wanted to make them a little bit um, like tiny, a little sweeter. And I had an idea to have some in the background, or oh no, that, that background effect. Uh, someone gave me the term for that on my last watercolor tutorial, bokeh, is that what it's called? And then I changed my mind. I thought, no, let me just add some flowers back there. So you can see these are more dainty and delicate. I wanted also, I think it's almost always a great idea when you're painting flowers to vary their direction. And I noticed in the first painting, a lot of them were kind of facing the same way and none of them you couldn't see the center so with this one I wanted to have a few of them kind of turned towards the viewer and the centers to Lily of the Valley flowers they have this little yellow um, little polyp or something in the middle and you know as I said before I love how much you learn as an artist just studying nature and uh, so this one was also a lot of fun and I am just so happy that Anjali really, I mean, she loved them. So I was just, oh my gosh, have you ever done a commission piece? That's kind of like the stressful part of a commission piece. You're just like on pins and needles wondering, is the client really going to like it or not? So that's always like a whew kind of moment. <laughs> so uh, these were also very fun. And now you can also see, here's this final of number two. You can see too how, how you get really good results on unsanded paper. When you plan things, out and you don't overwork things and you keep a light touch and now you can see same strategy get the sketch in get in your background blend it with your chamois cloth or whatever blending tool get in a very loose light overall cover cover your surface get everything blocked in and then you reserve that urge to get too detailed until the end and with these really nothing got really 
hard marks, except for maybe just a few um, gestural marks on a few of the flowers. And this one too, they all had kind of the same theme, uh, but they were um, varied a little bit on the composition. I actually really liked this one. I thought it came out probably the most organic looking. I think I like how I did the stems. And it sort of reminded me of the, uh, does anybody remember the Audubon, like botanical prints? And it, I didn't think of it until afterwards, but uh, it kind of, to me, had that kind of real earthy flair to it. But of course, this was my third time painting the Lily of the Valley flowers. So it's like I always say, paint a lot. Paint daily if you can. You will definitely get better with every painting. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And I hope and pray that the Lord blesses Angelie and her sweet little family. And I'm glad the Lord kept me around long enough to be able to do commission pieces like this. All right, artistic friends, as always, I pray blessings upon you in art and in life and happy painting.